Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Carver on a train. On a train because of my friend Joe Biden. That's Delaware Senator Tom Carper, a Democrat, remotely gaveling in a committee hearing back in March from an Amtrak train. President Joe Biden was in Wilmington for a St. Patrick's Day celebration that morning, and the city was so clogged with traffic that Carper missed his usual train to DC. I end up on the next train and I am joining you uh, remotely, but I've never done this before, so we'll see how it, uh, how it works out. If I'm jumping around, it's because the train is jumping around. I'm not jittery, it's just the train. Harper gave his opening statement and the hearing got on its way. About a half an hour later, his train arrived at Union Station a few blocks from the Capitol, and Carper finally made it into the hearing room in person. Welcome back in the flesh, Mr. Chairman. Um, and we appreciated your remarks while you were still on the train. When God closes a door, he opens a window. And in this case, the window was a Zoom. And it actually works on a train, which I had no idea. So I can just stop coming to hearings. We'll just do it on a train. Carper heads the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, which oversees the highway portion of Congress's embattled infrastructure package. But the senator is also a big proponent of rail, and he's optimistic that Amtrak will benefit from Biden's big infrastructure push. And he's not the only one. I can tell you my grandsons enjoy coming up here and watching the trains. I think Amtrak is the nation's railroad that will lead us into a future of interconnected passenger rail that may be Amtrak, maybe other providers as well. Amtrak has been starved for assets. If we had spent as little on the interstate highway system as we have spent on the interstate rail system, you wouldn't be able to get across this country. First and foremost, Amtrak always has funding needs for continued maintenance and repairs. You know, that's us building another tunnel under the Hudson River in order to um, actually do repairs on the other two. Superstorm Sandy really ravaged them. A lot of salt water got into the tunnels. If you know anything about electrical equipment and salt water, don't mix. Much of Amtrak's funding comes from the federal government, since operating and maintaining rail costs a lot more money than it can make from selling tickets. Making matters even more difficult, ridership crashed in 2020. These coverings are required on all trains and train stations. The whole of Amtrak's system was projected to break even for the first time in history, but then we had the pandemic. But there is still a huge backlog in deferred maintenance. Some of the difficulty in funding rail projects stems from Congress's yearly appropriations process. The Congressional Research Service found, quote, Amtrak's reliance on annual appropriations has made it difficult to fund long-term capital projects. Smith says he sees increased passenger rail as a way to take more cars off the road and reduce carbon emissions, as well as a way to stimulate a region's economy. The connectivity and the energy that comes from multimodalism allows this entire neighborhood to develop. If you look around, I bet on any day there will be nine or ten huge cranes visible on the skyline. You always have to shape your argument to your listener. So when I'm talking to elected officials, this is very much an economic development issue. If someone wants to talk environment, I can talk passenger rail and environment. Smith says funding for Amtrak isn't necessarily a partisan issue. He's found allies and fellow Republicans like Mississippi Senator Roger Wicker. We believe we can make safe, on time, profitable passenger rail work for the Gulf Coast, and today is a great step in getting that to be a reality. Senator Wicker, big supporter of passenger rail in, in our home state of Mississippi because he sees the economic development potential there. And what it does for the quality of life of the people who live there is just extraordinary. But to make Amtrak extraordinary will take big investments investments like the ones called for by the competing infrastructure proposals. Biden's initial infrastructure proposal called for an $80 billion investment in Amtrak. Republicans are aiming for a lower number. It's probably not going to be either of those numbers if we have regular order and regular reauthorization and appropriation. It'll be something in between, but it will be more than passenger rail has seen as an investment at one time in the history of this country. At least one transportation expert is skeptical that any influx of money from the federal government would be worthwhile. You're looking at minor improvements. So you might, uh, you might see some increased service, 
Uh, you might see some upgraded track. It's more likely going to be just politically directed projects, not very efficient. And we're gonna look, we're gonna look at passenger rail in 20 years, the same way we're looking at it today, which is that it serves uh, very few people. It serves uh, outside the Northeast corridor. And it's just, it's not an important aspect of, of Americans' lives, the way that other modes of transportation are. What if there was an effective rail system that worked for people across the country? Amtrak has a long way to go, but one thing critics and advocates alike can agree on is that with Joe Biden in the White House, rail will be getting a lot more attention. We have Amtrak Joe, and he's one of the country's greatest commuters. If anyone understands it, it's him, and I think we have a great advocate in the White House. I believe that the best days for Amtrak and for rail and for America are ahead. I really believe that, and I'm just confident. I'm confident we can get this done.